Greetings, everyone. Time for another edition of Precalculus Notes, and uh, here's what we're going to work on today. Let's say I gave you this problem, x plus y to the fifth power. What does that equal? Well, we know anything to the fifth means we write it out five times, and we multiply it all together. Now, if you think about this, this is going to be a mess, because we've got all these terms to multiply together. We can multiply the first two. Once we get that, we can multiply that answer by the next one, and then that answer by the next one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Chances are we'll make a mistake somewhere along the line, and we'll get the wrong answer in the end. The end goal today is to be able to do this using a shortcut. In fact, if you know what you're doing, you can jump to this answer right away with only doing a very small amount of work. And then once you know that shortcut, we can even do more complex problems, like something like, let's say, 2x minus y to the fifth. So if we have something other than just x plus y, we can figure out what that is right away. We have to do just a little more work for that. But the goal today is to learn a shortcut that will help us figure out the answers to these problems right away with a very small amount of work. OK, so what we're going to use is what's called the binomial theorem. And here it is. And I know what you're thinking right now. This does not look like a shortcut at all. In fact, it looks like a mess to me. Well, let's see what this is saying here. x plus y. So this is saying the shortcut to find x plus y to any power is to follow this whole procedure. Well, this procedure looks really bad, but let's just take a look at a few things. First, let's look at the x's. We have x to the n, x to the n minus 1, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, until we end up with x to the first and then no x's. So basically, one part of this shortcut means the powers of x will go down as we progress along this whole sequence. Here's another thing you notice. There's no y's here. Here a y appears. There's more y's until you end up with y to the n at the end. So the powers of y will go up. Then another thing you might notice is, OK, this number in front here, we see this c. What's that all about? So the number in front is going to be what's called a combination. And we're going to have to talk about what that means. But if we take a look at just a few examples, we know that x plus y to the 0, anything to the 0th power is 1. So that one's easy. x plus y to the 1st, hey, this one's easy as well. Anything to the 1st just equals itself. x plus y squared, well, if we square this, it means multiply by itself. If we use a distributive property, that gives us x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And things just get progressively more difficult with this. And we could keep multiplying here, x plus y to the fourth to the fifth. But let's go through this shortcut a little bit first, OK? So one thing we have to talk about before we get into this shortcut is something called the combination. Now, I know you learned about this a little bit in Algebra 2 last year. And chances are you didn't care for it that much. Students normally don't like combinations and permutations. And sometimes you'll see combinations written in this format, where it's, it would be read NCR. And to find a combination, we take n factorial, the first number factorial, over n minus r factorial times r factorial. And sometimes you'll even see it written this way. Now, tomorrow we're going to get into more about what these factorials mean. But for today, let's just worry about calculating these. So I'm going to calculate 5C3, a combination of five objects taken three at a time using this formula. To do that, I can take 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. OK, I'm just going to write this out. Factorial means times itself. So that's 5 times, or excuse me, not times itself. It means times every progressive integer all the way down to 1. So if I write this all out, then we can simplify a little bit. And we get an answer of 10. So now, going back to that binomial theorem, all of these coefficients are always combinations. So if we know how to calculate combinations, we can always figure out all these coefficients all the way down the line. Now, that's one way to do this, but that seems like a lot of work. A very intelligent man 
hundreds of years ago figured out an easier way. This guy, his name was Blaise Pascal, lived in the 1600s, and if we kind of look a little bit at his life, did a lot of lot of stuff, uh, really uh, furthered mathematics, especially in the field of probability. Now, this is kind of sad here at the end. It says, after a lifetime of pain, he died in 1662. And I surely hope that my obituary someday does not read, after a lifetime of pain, he died at this, at this date, okay? Hopefully it reads, after a lifetime of happiness, but we'll see what, what uh, We'll see what, where life leads us all. So Pascal came up with this thing called Pascal's Triangle. Here's how you come up with it. Write this down. Start with a 1, and then from that 1, we'll make a triangle of additional 1s right below it. Now from there on out, every number that we write is going to be the sum of the two numbers diagonally above it. So if we have a 1, the sum of these two will be 3, sum of these two will be 3, and then one again. And once you see how it works, it's relatively easy to come up with Pascal's triangle. Now, there's a ton of interesting mathematics embedded in Pascal's triangle. In fact, you could probably study Pascal's triangle for months, and there's always going to be more interesting patterns, more connections that you can find in here. Now, it seems like, you know, it's just kind of this interesting pattern. But Pascal's triangle is an excellent way to find these combinations. So if we want to find the combination of five items taken three at a time, here's how we can do it. We go down to the fifth row. So I'm just going to make a note here, fifth row. And we go over to the third term. Now, we have to be careful here because this top row, this is the zeroth row. Seems kind of strange to say that, but here's our first row, second row, third row, fourth row. Here's our fifth row. Now, likewise, going left to right, here's our zeroth term. So here's our first term, second term, third term. So this number here is going to be equal to the combination of five objects taken three at a time. So any of these combination problems, you can come up with the answer using Pascal's triangle. If I asked you, for example, for 7C4, let's say, we go down to the seventh row, it's right here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, here's my answer. So that seems to be a kind of quick, easy way to come up with these combinations. Now, that's going to lead to our shortcut. If we remember Pascal's triangle, we can come up with our binomial theorem relatively easily. So let's take a look at this problem. We want to know what does x plus y to the fifth equal? There are two ways you could do this. The difficult way is to write this out five times, multiply it together, see what you get. Here's the easy way. The easy way is to realize that there's three things going on. First of all, first thing, the powers of x will go down with every term. Second, the powers of y will go up every term. Third, the coefficients follow Pascal's triangle. Okay, so remembering that, my first term is going to be x to the fifth. Why? Because, well, the first power of x is going to be whatever this power here is. Plus, my next term is going to have some amount, let's leave a space, times x to the fourth times y to the first plus, next term is going to be some amount times x to the third times y squared. Notice, my powers of x are going down every term, my powers of y are going up every term. Next, we're going to have some amount times x squared times y to the third. Next, we're going to have some amount times x to the first times y to the fourth. And last, we're going to have some amount times y to the fifth. I know I'm done because I got y to the fifth, that's my power I'm raising this to. Now, that right there is almost all of my answer. To find the coefficients, I look at Pascal's triangle. Since we're talking x to the fifth, we're going to use these numbers in the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. So let's go in there and put those numbers in. The first number was 1, and then 5, and then 10, then 10 again, then another 5, 
and then 1, and there's our answer. So like I said, once you get it, it's a huge shortcut for us. Three things happening. Powers of x go down, powers of y go up, and the coefficients are those numbers from Pascal's triangle. Well, all right, this is nice. This is easy. Okay, let's do another one. 2x plus y to the fifth. Or excuse me, 2x minus y to the fifth. Okay, as soon as we have anything besides just x and y, and we might have something like, let me write another one, like 3 d plus 2 to the seventh power. So we don't even need x's and y's in there. It can be any variables, any numbers, any power. We just need an additional step or two when using um, our previous method. So let's start by writing what this answer is, x plus y to the fifth. And we had it on the previous page, so I'm just going to copy it again. x to the fifth plus 5 x to the fourth y plus 10 x to the third y squared plus 10 x squared y to the third plus 5 x y to the fourth plus 1 y to the fifth. Okay, now here's what we need to do. Anywhere we had an x in this problem, we're going to make a substitution. We're going to substitute this, 2x, in place of all those x's. Likewise, anywhere there was a y in this expression, we're going to make another substitution. We're going to plug negative y in place of that y. Okay, so let me do that. So instead of writing x to the fifth, I'm going to write 2x in parentheses to the fifth plus. Instead of writing 5x to the fourth y, I'm going to write 5 times parentheses 2x to the fourth times another set of parentheses negative y. Plus, instead of writing this term, I'm going to write 10 times parentheses 2x to the third times parentheses negative y squared. Plus, let's do another substitution, 10 times 2x squared times negative y to the third. Plus, it's getting a little long, so I'll bring it down here. 5 times parentheses 2x times negative y to the fourth plus parentheses negative y to the fifth. Okay, so let's simplify what we have. So 2x to the fifth, if we take 2 to the fifth power, I believe that will give us 32. So that gives us 32x to the fifth plus Okay, this looks messy. Let's take care of this power first. 2 to the 4th is 16. If I multiply that by this 5 out here, I have 16 times 5, I have 80. And then we have a negative 1, so I actually have, I'm going to make this a minus. Minus 80. So let's check the number again. 2 to the 4th is 16 times negative 1 times 5. 80 x to the 4th y. Next term, plus, let's check the number. 2 to the third is 8. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 10 is going to be 80 again. We have x to the third, y squared. Next term, we have 2 squared, which is 4. Negative 1 to the third, which is negative 1. So 4 times negative 1 times 10 is minus 40. x squared, y to the third. Next term, we have 5 times 2. Negative 1 to the 4th is positive 1, so it's going to be plus 10. x, y to the 4th. And last term, negative 1 to the 5th is negative 1, so I'm going to say minus y to the 5th. And there's our answer. And if I actually try to write our original terms out 5 times and multiply, there's no way I'd come up with this without making some mistakes in there. So the binomial theorem is a huge shortcut for us. We need to remember three things to make it work. First, powers of x go down every time. Second, powers of y go up every time. Third, the coefficients are going to be those values from Pascal's triangle. OK, get a little bit of practice working on that. Let me know what questions you have as you're practicing. And even though it, you might think that it looks OK now, make sure you get some practice to make sure you can do this.